Life turning pages, night turning day. I'm tired of waiting. I gotta make it. What's up, y'all? This is really all back with another video, yes, son. Today we gotta talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers, man, because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. And it's been a while, but before we get to that, I need you to smash that subscribe button. If you are already subscribed to my channel, share it to somebody who ain't subscribed because with y'all, I know I can get there. And also, make sure to hover over to the like button so we can tell the YouTube algorithm to share this video with the world. But with all that being said, though, we got to talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers, so let's get into it. Now, let's start off with Luke Walton, right, because we got a couple of topics, but let's start off with Luke Walton, right, because me personally, I was a little shocked at this. A lot of people hit me up because, honestly, when this broke through, I was like, huh? Like, I didn't even know this had happened, but when I did, I'm like, you know, I don't think we should have did this. Now, I'm not sure what the Cleveland Cavaliers rationale was behind getting Luke Walton. Me personally, I just don't think Luke Walton is a really great coach. We've seen him in Los Angeles. We've seen him in Sacramento. And he was piss poor, right? Um, yes, he's had his his fair share of criticism, his controversy. But uh, if we were to take that away and just, just uh, give him the, the ranking based off of his actual talents as a coach, I just don't see it. Now, I know he's an assistant coach, so he's not gonna have a lot of say right but he still is gonna be hands-on with certain players and helping with their development in my personal opinion but i just don't know what luke walton is bringing out of players right like i just don't really see him as a developmental player or a developmental coach because um what team has he helped develop so far was it the lakers no was it the sacramento kings no so me personally, I'm not too high on it, but down in the comment below, I want y'all to tell me how y'all feel about this. Cause it was some people I did see that was kind of happy. I won't say ecstatic, but they was confident that Luke Walton would do a great job here. So, you know, I think it's room for error, but I don't know. I'm just not all in with Luke Walton, but we will see very shortly, won't we? Also, we have someone else who watches the Cavs, who watches my videos, who wanted to share his perspective on who the Cleveland Cavaliers should draft. So I was like, you know what, why not? And also on the subject of that, <laughs> I also, whoever wants to share their perspective, the first 10 people to send me a 30 second clip or a minute clip of who the Cleveland Cavaliers should draft and why will be featured on my video. So I will post that screenshot. Also follow me on Instagram for more details, more information. But like I said before, you know what I'm saying? The first 10 people will be featured on my channel. But like I said before, let's hand him over to Mike. Let's hear his perspective on who the Cleveland Cavaliers should draft in his eyes. I mean, I think the Cavs should select this a lengthy a small forward. They could address most of the Cavs problem. His name is Terry Asin. And that motherfucker lengthy, he has good size to be a small forward and he has good perimeter defense, so that's what we fucking need. That's also something that coach JB has been addressing and I mean shit, he plays defense, he's athletic, he could be a knockdown shooter at times. And what more do we want from him? We need a small forward because Lauer can't really play that position well. He did last year, but we still need a, an original and true small forward. Now, in terms of the ending, I do agree. I do think the Cleveland Cavaliers should try to find a true small forward. The problem with that is it is very, very hard to find something like that in the NBA currently. When it comes to average or above average small forwards, it's hard, especially for them to actually be the built of a small forward. <laughs> it is just it really is. It really is. Like it's easier to get guards, it's even easier to get centers, you know what I'm saying? Even though it's hard to get certain types of centers like, you know, rim protectors, but, you know, and that's why they, they you know, they're so desirable in today's league. But, you know, let me know down in the comments how you feel about his take as well, and I want to know who y'all think the Cleveland Cavaliers should draft. And of course, we still got a couple of topics that we have to talk about. Don't get me wrong. It ain't over, man. Now, before we talk about Mike Conley, I just wanted to say this because when I seen this, man, it was talking about these are the essentially the comparisons for these players, man. I'm like, dang, Zion. But like I said before, let's talk about uh, Mike Conley because it's been rumors. It's been speculation, according to Chris, that the Cleveland Cavaliers may have some interest in Mike Conley. And that's important. It's important because we can understand why the Cleveland Cavaliers would want to pursue Mike Conley, right? Because they want something that's close enough to Rubio, 
that's just slightly more sustainable uh, sustainable that's more appropriate to the Cleveland Cavaliers projection and Mike Conley might be that right Rondo's in a little bit of trouble he might leave the Cavs you know a lot of people want them to resign Rubio but Rubio might not be playing for a little while longer still so who's active who can complement the Cavs maybe Mike Conley the problem I have with this though I'm not sure if the Cleveland Cavaliers should be pursuing Mike Conley because I'm not sure that Mike Conley should be the first priority in terms of who we should try to pursue. I think a player or position we should try to pursue is something we've talked about earlier and that's a small forward. Now, who that small forward is, I'm not sure. But I do know we have to prioritize getting a small forward and understanding who's going to play that small, who's locked in, right? Because you got to understand, we got we got Colin Sexton coming back. We're probably going to pay him. Karis Avert is probably going to get some money. We got DG. Yes, it would be good to have Mike Conley on a more reasonable deal. You know what I mean? But we have to address some other things that's slightly more important than trying to get Mike Conley. Mike Conley would help us win more games. Don't get me wrong. Veteran leadership, someone who understands how to be gritty, someone who was a leader on the Memphis Grizzlies, a player who led his team to the playoff, a player who understands what it takes to complement younger talent like Donovan Mitchell, right? He can work, especially when he, his role is not to be a star, when his role is not to be Mecca, right? The alpha. He's not going to have to do that. We got Colin. We got uh, Karis. We have Darius Garland. We have Jared Allen. We have Evan Mobley. We have talent that needs to be developed. Mike Conley can help that. But I do think we need to address the small forward. Maybe we try to pursue a player like Cam Reddish who's going for cheap. We've seen it already once this season. Maybe Cleveland can strike gold again. You know what I mean? But down in the comment below. I want to know how y'all feel about this because me personally, I think we've talked about a lot of things, right? We've talked about Luke Walton, we've talked about Mike Conley, and we've talked about who the Cleveland Cavaliers should eye in the draft, right? And I think a lot of y'all are in difference of opinion, right? We heard people say Dyson Daniels, you get what I'm saying? A lot of people said this, some people said that, right? And I want to know who you think the Cleveland Cavaliers should pursue because we have the 14th pick, right? I was on, uh, I was an advocate of saying Cleveland Cavaliers should maybe try to consider trading it, right? But I've had some very educated people tell me that it might be kind of hard to do, especially because we are very well, for us to get the talent I'm eyeing, we might have to attach a player like Harris Avert or Colin Sexton to get a talent like I'm thinking of. So, down in the comment below, let me know how y'all feel about this. Who do you think we should draft? Who do you think we should do? And tell me if you think Luke Walton is the player or not the player, is the coach that's going to help us. He's an assistant coach, remember that. And also, do you think Mike Conley is a player that we should prioritize and try to get this offseason? Down in the comments below. That's Atlantis with that money.